Branch retinal vein occlusion is a common retinal vascular disorder that generally occurs at the sites of arteriovenous crossing. Macular edema is the most frequent cause of vision decrease in branch retinal vein occlusion. Treatment of macular edema due to branch retinal vein occlusion is still controversial and there are different options like grid laser photocoagulation, intravitreal injections of different kinds of corticosteroids, or surgical procedures like vitrectomy with or without arteriovenous sheathotomy, or intravitreal injections of anti-VEGF drugs. Off-label intravitreal injection of bevacizumab has become a widely used treatment. This treatment can be very successful with complete resolution of macular edema and increase of visual acuity. The long-term follow-up data of bevacizumab treatment of branch retinal vein occlusion show that macular edema initially resolves completely in 65% of patients. However, only 15% remain stable after injections without recurrence of macular edema. 50% of patients get recurrences and have a need for repeated injections. 35% do not respond to bevacizumab sufficiently even after having received at least three injections. Therefore, anti-VEGF treatment can be highly effective at first However, in the long run, the vast majority of patients needs alternative treatment. The Branch Vein Occlusion Study Group has demonstrated that grid laser photocoagulation may be effective in reducing macular edema and in improving visual acuity. The photocoagulation of the photoreceptors reduces the oxygen consumption of the outer retina and allows oxygen to diffuse from the choroid to the inner retina where it relieves hypoxia. However, performing grid laser treatment can be difficult for several reasons. The planning of the exact grid localization has to be done on a fluorescein angiogram according to angiographic findings. This treatment plan has to be kept in mind and transferred to the live fundus when performing laser treatment. In conventional laser treatment, it is difficult to achieve an equally spaced grid pattern. An accurately spaced grid pattern is a precondition for a more standardized grid laser treatment and helps to evaluate grid laser photocoagulation in clinical studies. Eye movements during treatment can be dangerous, especially when laser photocoagulation is performed close to the fovea. A realistic documentation of the applied grid treatment has not been possible so far. This is especially true if a subthreshold laser treatment has been chosen, as recommended by some authors, where the applied laser energy does not lead to visible fundus changes. To overcome these shortcomings in conventional grid laser photocoagulation, we performed a prospective study using the navigated laser system Navilas, which contains an eye tracking function. The system allows to acquire infrared and color images as well as fluorescein angiograms. Treatment planning can be directly done on the fluorescein angiogram. During the laser photocoagulation, the treatment plan is overlaid with the live fundus image. Treatment is done in infrared mode to improve the patient's comfort during treatment. The laser beam moves according to the treatment plan automatically to the pre-planned locations. Diameter and intensity of laser spots are also digitally planned prior to treatment. Switching to the color live fundus image is possible to check the burn intensity and to adjust the desired energy. All applied laser spots are immediately documented, allowing maximum transparency of the performed treatment. Eleven patients with unfavorable response to bevacizumab injections were treated with Navilas grid laser photocoagulation. 
Branch retinal vein occlusion had been present for about one and one and a half years on average. Mean age of patients was 67 years. All patients had received multiple bevacizumab injections without sufficient long-term response. Macular edema frequently recurred or never resolved completely. Patients had received six bevacizumab injections on average before laser treatment. To reduce the need for further intravitreal injections, Navilas grid laser was performed. Treatment parameters include laser pulse duration of 100 milliseconds, spot size of 100 micrometers, and spot spacing of 1.5 burn widths. Laser energy was individually adjusted to produce barely visible spots. Blood vessels and hemorrhages were avoided. The main outcome measures were central retinal thickness and visual acuity. After a follow-up of four months, central retinal thickness had decreased by a mean of 124 micrometers, which is highly significant. Visual acuity could be stabilized in all patients without any further bevacizumab injections. Although decrease of macular edema was highly significant, no significant increase in visual acuity was achieved. We summarize that navigated grid laser treatment using the Navilas system was safe and could easily be performed. The laser grid pattern, which was planned according to the fluorescein angiographic findings, could be accurately applied to the fundus. Navigated grid laser treatment was able to reduce macular edema significantly and to stabilize visual acuity in patients with branch retinal vein occlusion in whom bevacizumab treatment had failed. <laughs>